Hello everybody! Today we're gonna explain whether these pumps are valuable or rather expensive. So we're gonna give you some insight about total cost of ownership and how to calculate your operating cost energy-wise for products and your general equipment as well. So why don't you just follow me to the whiteboard and then we'll sort that out. The idea is, last year I had a customer walking in here from like not that far away running a koi pond in his garden. And in his koi pond he had a pump which was running at 750 watts. Which I couldn't believe because he told me he's got a, quite a big koi pond which is 75 cubic meters. And his pump was running at 750 watts so at first I was like yeah, could be. But then he mentioned that the pump is only delivering three and a half to four thousand liters per hour. So roughly a thousand gallons. So if we note this, 750 watts, so delivering, let's say, 3,500 liter per hour. So that's quite an expensive pump to run. Why is it so little just in, in volume that the pump is delivering? So most likely, first idea that comes to my mind if somebody tells me about that is that the pump is made for a different operational point. So normally these pumps then are made for a much higher head pressure, maybe around 10, 15, up to 20 meters. And that was exactly the case. So this pump that the, the owner of the koi pond used was actually running up to 18 meters in head pressure. Nobody needs that when you're just running a gravity fed filtration system on a koi pond. You rather want to have more turnover to actually get more detritus into the filtration system and turn the whole thing around. I mean 3000 liters on a 75 cubic meter system is not really a good idea. Then I recommended to him he doesn't have that many fish so he doesn't have a giant bio load. So what I explained to him is that he should go for an A200 which would at a maximum run at 200 watts. That's why the name, A200, 200 watts, A400, 400 watts, quite simple, straightforward. So the A200 will deliver in a gravity fed system if plumbed in properly, roughly 14.5 cubic meters. So we'll just write that in liters per hour to stay in the same area. And does it have a head pressure of 9.5 meters, which is irrelevant at that point because we are running with a big diameter so we're talking about 14.5. His pump was 250 euros. So quite a cheap pump, average quality for a standard you know submersible pump, not really suited for that appliance but I said you know he was he's been using it for two years and now he was complaining because his koi pond is dragging so much power. I explained to him, well, you should use the A200 and then you will save a lot of energy and thus a lot of money. And then he asked me about the price of the A200. And the A200 in Europe right now runs for roughly 1800 euros. Of course, he had to sit down for a second, <laughs> but I explained to him that he will get that money back uh, within the first year, most likely. In Germany, and I know we are quite high with the energy costs and that's almost everywhere in Europe. We're talking about an energy cost of roughly 35 cents per kilowatt hour. So now if our pump is running at 750 watts, which equals 0.75 kilowatts, we'll multiply that with the energy cost of 0.35 euros and then we need the time the pumps are running. So in a year, you'll, if you multiply 24 hours times 365, it'll be roughly 8,800 hours. Now, if we put that into the calculator, 0 0.75 times 0 0.35 times 8,800. So that's our actual running cost. 2,300 euros per year. So that's quite a bit of money, roughly 200, 200 euros per month, just in energy cost. Of course, this pump is not adjustable, so you can, in the winter, dial it down. If you switch it off, your filtration dies off. You don't have any more oxygen in the water, so that doesn't make um, very good sense. So 
This is how I explain to him his actual running costs that are quite high. So now if you do the same calculation for the A200, so we're at 0.2 kilowatt hours, uh, kilowatts times 0.35 euros times 8,800 hours. Let's put that into the calculator. So we are at 0.2 times 0.35 times 8,800, 616. 600 euros. So that's a difference of 1,700 euros in the first year. After the first year and the first month, the pump is already paid for and then you still have nine year warranties left on that pump. This would be the direct comparison of energy cost and running cost. So now you see the product price of 1800 is actually justified by the power savings in this case. The power savings are actually a bit more because he's not running the pump at 100% because he only needs roughly 10 cubic meters because his bio load is not as high. But that gives him a little bit of backup power in the summer when you have an algae bloom and the sun is hammering down. And in the winter you can dial the pump down to a minimum of maybe 20% and then you'll save even more money. And you could also do that automatically because we have the smart temp sensor uh, which you can connect to the IPU devices, uh, the drivers of our pumps and then you can set a certain uh, temperature uh, and, and speed level at let's say below 5 degrees Celsius if the fish aren't fed anyway and the, the metabolism is quite down. So you just need a little bit of oxygen and a little bit of filtration uh, and in the summer the pump speeds up automatically by the water temperature. So you can't really forget to readjust your pump for the summer so that makes it very very easy to save even more money than this. That's the first point when you compare total cost of ownership which is another big point of course you have to take into consideration the maintenance cost for the pumps as well so in a home aquarium I would always recommend to compare total cost of ownerships over a time span of at least five years. In public aquariums uh, we usually calculate 10 years because over the time span of 10 years you might end up having to exchange other pumps as well already within that time period. So let's say after eight years you need a new pump. So you put the cost for the new pump into your calculation as well. And then also the maintenance cost. So if you have, let's say, bearings or gaskets that need to be exchanged annually or maintenance that needs to be done. So you put those costs in and also the purchase cost. Of course, we lose pretty much with the purchase cost uh, of 1800 euros in the case of an A200 and the other pump is definitely cheaper. But when you compare all the maintenance that you don't need to do on the abyss, then you will definitely be cheaper in the total cost of ownership as well. And that's what you have to compare. If you've watched, for example, a presentation from me at, at RAW in, in the US, I do have those presentations ready. If you need to have some insights on the whole thing, uh, please just send us an email and we'll do the calculations for your system. That's no problem. But if you see that, those total costs of ownership quickly add up over a time span of five to 10 years to become five digit numbers and then it becomes suddenly very relevant whether in this case you'll spend 45,000 euros or 16. So that's the amount of money that actually can be saved with those pumps. We do consider in our calculation after 10 years of warranty period you technically could actually buy a new Abyss pump but you don't need to because you could still repair it. So just because it's out of warranty doesn't mean it breaks immediately. You know, so that's uh, it's not a not a best before date that we put on. That's the biggest issue, and that, those are the type of calculations you have to do when you think about exchanging pumps on your system or whether you're suffering from high energy cost. Of course, when you're living in an area where the energy cost is significantly less, you have to do that calculation for yourself, and then it might be that the pump is actually maybe writing itself off after four years or five years, but still you're saving a lot of energy and I think that's the right thing to do for the future that we uh, all want to have and our children want to have. So look into that, wherever it makes sense, do a quick calculation like this scheme and then yeah, you can decide for yourself whether you want to invest that money, but definitely this is worth it. So hope to see you next Saturday on our YouTube channel. Take care and if you have any questions, let me know and we'll answer those soon. Take care, bye bye.